So I continue my journey down south uh, into France today. I came down past Lyon, um, a little bit further down. I'm going to make my way down towards Rheims and Epinay, but decided to uh, stop a little bit early. A couple of things I wanted to get from the supermarket, which I've managed to do, and I got a new sim from uh, one of the supermarkets. So I managed to find myself this little sort of park up. It's in a, a small woodland area. Uh, just off the road, but it's uh, nice and quiet. You can see Moggy behind me. So after a pleasant uh, evening spent parked up in the woods, um, I carried on the journey, um, sticking to the back roads rather than the motorways and the toll roads, but it was a really good drive, lovely scenery, passing through some really quaint little towns and villages. Um, not very busy at all, in fact it was a really enjoyable drive. And way out in the countryside at a place called Mar 4, uh, I came across two First World War uh, cemeteries, a British one and a German one, both next door to one another, which is quite unusual. first one I went into was the, uh, the British one, and it was laid out immaculately, uh, all the headstones in perfect lines with the name of the soldier, his rank, uh, his regiment, and more often than not his age and uh, the youngest I found at this particular cemetery was 18, which is so young when you think uh, a complete lifetime uh, wasted really over what? Uh, millions lost their lives and what did it prove? What did it achieve? A lot of the headstones as well just had um, an unknown soldier, so there were lots of people buried here that were probably, you know, missing uh, but were never found. And now, in the British side, as you can see, there are literally, you know, headstones as far as the eye can see. It's a huge, huge area. I don't really know how many uh, graves there are in this particular cemetery. Um, I didn't see it marked anywhere, which was um, in contrast to the German side, as you'll see in a moment. Um, when I crossed into the German cemetery, it actually gave you the number of uh, graves within the cemetery itself. This was the centerpiece of the British side, the cross and the sword pinned to the cross. But then I entered the German side, and as you can see a different type of sign, a similar gate, But then once inside, you can see that these are very simple black crosses. Little uh, stone here that gives you 4,417 soldiers of between 1914 and 18 that lost their lives here. And as you walk down along the lines of the crosses, you can see the name, uh, a rank, and date of death. Rarely do you see the actual age, but there uh, was ages on one or two, but more, as I said, just the, the name, the rank, and the day of the death. Well, it all made me feel a bit sad, really, but uh, I have to continue the journey. Um, there are thousands of these cemeteries throughout France, but uh, the journey must continue. And it wasn't long before I found myself well into the uh, Champagne area. So I'm still going through the uh, Champagne country. It's, it's quite incredible. 
Um, I've probably driven 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers this morning already and I'm still passing uh, acre upon acre of uh, vineyards. Um, there are signs saying this is the route to tourism of Champagne but it just keeps going on and on and on. Um, quite incredible really. At one point I did come across an area where I saw some of the machinery being used and some of the people that are obviously looking after the, uh, the vines. Obviously a lot of hard work. Quite a lot of people as well. Okay, well, good morning folks. This is the start of a full complete week in uh, Europe. I left uh, last Wednesday, took the ferry from Dover to Calais and uh, I've spoken a little bit about that in the previous video. Um, so today's Monday, Monday the 13th of September, so it's the first the day of the full week as I said. Um, I still haven't got any real plans uh, as to exactly which route I'm going to take. But I was speaking, or in fact got a message, messaging um, Ben and Czeska, uh, of Overland in Sofia. And uh, they actually took the ferry from Italy to Greece and they're going to spend some time in Greece. And I was thinking that that might be not a bad alternative rather than driving all the way down through to Greece and then into Turkey. The other thing as well is my ex-partner is still in fact my best friend, Nikki. So I'm thinking what I probably will do is to slowly make my way down uh, through France uh, and then cross into Italy. Now I understand that uh, if I cross into Italy within a certain period of days from leaving England, I'm going to have to go into uh, isolation and take tests and all that sort of stuff. But I know uh, Ben and Cheska said that they were in France for 14 days and when they crossed the border they didn't have any problems whatsoever. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to stay until next uh, weekend in France and then cross into Italy. Fingers crossed there's no problems. But um, yeah, I just have to see how things go. But the weather's been fantastic this last couple of days and today has started out brilliantly as well. Uh, lots of sunshine and it's really quite warm 27 28 degrees so uh, yeah really enjoying it at the moment and if this keeps up it's going to be uh, great going down through france so that's the basic plan um what will work out i really don't know hopefully it'll all go uh, well um but i must admit i'm looking forward to getting down to uh, turkey for the winter there you go at the moment i'm staying in a place called saint uh, images um, which is not far from um, Epinay in the heart of the Champagne area um, and that's been quite uh, quite a good sort of drive down so we'll see. Well I obviously spoke too soon because uh, after saying about the uh, the good weather I've been having the very next day it started to pour with rain and continued raining for most of the day. Fortunately it was only four one day and the day afterwards the sun came back out and um, I continued my journey and continuing on from the uh, the cemeteries, I came across another uh, memorial, um, but this time to the Second World War, um, between 40 and 45 obviously, with a couple of old vehicles, a jeep and a half track. French are very keen on their war memorials it seems. Considering these um, vehicles don't move, they're actually sort of fixed, um, they stay in remarkably good condition. Um, they look freshly painted, whether they are or not, I'm not sure. And as you can see, it's just started to rain on me again. Um, but there, yeah, that's the way it goes. The other thing that I found really interesting as I passed through the next village was the way they decorate their water towers. Quite amazing. So I've been parked up uh, on this uh, service point for a night. It's been a good stop. Uh, free services, including electric, which is a bonus. Um, so yeah, but it's not the most pleasant of places, to be honest. It's actually part of a mixed parking area. So lots of cars, bit of noise from the road. 
Um, but yeah, it's free and uh, I got electric for the night, so that was a bonus. So my next stop was in a town called Muem Morvan, which uh, was where I stayed for actually for three nights because of the weather. But once again, um, there's plenty of the, uh, the war memorials in and around the town. But once again, it was pleasant because it was a free air with free electric. So that brought me to the end of the first uh, week in uh, France and next week I'll be going further through France into Italy.